Welcome to the second episode for Series 11. Some real quick announcements, and we'll be ready to hop right into the episode. Just a reminder, I'll be at Midwinter Gaming Convention on Saturday, January 12th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, almost exactly one month from the release of this episode. I'll be running two games of my game, Chimera. So if you want to get in on some fantasy superhero magical girls gameplay, definitely check it out and sign up if you are able to attend. Also, Amelia is gearing up for her launch of her L5R podcast detailing the history of the lore of L5R, which sounds really amazing. You can find them at G5R Podcast on Twitter or garbageofthefiverains.com. Finally, come check us out at our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, and speaking of hearing from you, don't forget to leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or our Facebook page in order to help others find the podcast as well. It really does help us out, and really does help us feel amazing whenever we read them. With all of that said... Let's get on with the show. Enjoy. In the last episode, Amelia was making a whisper, I was making a slide, Josie was making a hound, Ree was making a lurk, and Minna was creating a leech. We'll be picking up right where we left off, so let's get right to it. Enjoy the show. Okay, so the next step is where we actually uh, get to talk about uh, those action dots. Uh, there are the action skills. So um, over on kind of the, the right side of the character sheet, there's a list of, of 12 items broken up into three big categories. Those are your actions. That is how you interact with everything in Blades in the Dark. Um, they are hunt, study, survey, tinker, finesse, prowl, skirmish, wreck, attune, command, consort, and sway. Every playbook starts with three uh, dots already assigned, and then you can assign another four however you want. There are no class skills or anything. You can just put things wherever you want. So if you want to be like a really charming uh, whisper who's very good at talking to people, you can put a bunch of stuff into Sway and Consort. The one kind of limiting factor is that at character creation, you can't put more than two dots in anything. But otherwise, you can just kind of put stuff wherever you want. Although it does recommend as a guideline in the book that you put a dot down that reflects the heritage of your character, one that reflects the background of your character, and then just two wherever you want. Yeah. But that's just a guideline. Like, you don't need to I like to that. doing that because it kind of helps like make that yeah. experience be reflected in the mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of, like, this never comes up. Like, what's the best skill for like riding a horse i think it's mm-hmm. finesse okay. yeah fin- the yeah finesse Fina- yeah, is finesse the one is, you might handle the controls of a vehicle or direct amount that's one of the things listed oh. on page 58 under finesse now we know i think i made you guys ride horses once and you didn't have to roll for it because you were riding with people <laughs> yeah it's finesse <laughs> yeah finesse is like the weirdest skill because like nobody can ever figure out where to apply it <laughs> yeah um so yeah, if people have questions about like what the different actions kind of cover, I can talk about them in a little more. Like, um, but awesome. yeah. yeah, I'm trying to figure out because um, because I, I start with one consort and two sway. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're very charming. So yeah, so sway. The, those are both like social skills that overlap a little bit are, are, are distinct. So Sway is being manipulative and deceitful and you don't really care about 
what happens to the other person after you're done talking to them. Mm-hmm. Consort- it can also just be like a good argument slash persuasion, technically. But Yeah. Um, con- consort is you actually care about this other person. You are having an open, honest connection with them. Mm. So that is something that you would use where you do care about what happens to this person after uh, sway is you're using people to get what you want. (laughs) Consort is you're building a connection to get what you want. Um, So like similar, they, they can, you could have somebody say the exact same thing, but it would have very different implications depending on which skill you rolled. Ah, that makes sense. In those cases. Um, so yeah, that's with with the slide, you you are you are pretty good at both. Yeah. So for survey, is that like your sort of perception, like your ability to Yeah, yeah. That that is sort of high level scanning of an area. Survey and study kind of are the two perception skills. Study has some other applications as well, but like survey is I'm going to look over something broadly. Study is I'm going to do a really deep, narrow focus on something. Okay. I'm assuming command is commanding people to do things. Yeah, yeah. That that's kind of the yeah, being giving orders, being intimidating, um, things like that. What would it and then a tune? Um, that is the one that you use for spooky occult stuff. Um so another thing about the setting is there is something called the ghost field that kind of overlays everything. It contain it, it's it contains ghosts it contains memories it contains echoes of the city as it used to be um it it's kind of loosely defined so in a game you can do sort of whatever you want with it to a degree but it, it, generally speaking in order to do any kind of um occult stuff you're going to be doing a tune and it's usually like attuning to the ghost field okay which like the whisper is especially good at it and has abilities that support that, but anyone can do it. Anybody can manipulate the ghost field and and interact with ghosts, for better or worse. Hmm. Yeah. I think I have my dots figured out. I have three of my four. I know, I'm debating on this last one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I have three out of four as well. Yeah. <laughs> I only have one in Resolve so far, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> for me. Uh-huh. I think I got it. Okay, I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm good, too. Uh, Me, uh, too. I guess my last question. Um, when it says hunt, yes, is that is that hunting prey, or um, can you hunt for other things? Yeah, that is basically, that is both kind of your tracking skill. So, like, if you're trying to follow somebody through the city, you would use hunt, but you also would use hunt for um, long-ranged attacks. Interesting. Okay. So, like, if you were, you know, trying to do sniping at a distance, okay. you would use hunt. Then I Whereas, also... yeah, skirmish is the, like, up-close ah. fighting. Very cool. Um, so, do we want to go through what, what we all assigned? What yeah. we've got? Yeah, please. I can start. So, for the lurk, I started with one dot in finesse and two dots in prowl. And then I gave myself one dot each in hunt, study, tinker, and consort. So I, I have I'm I spread out a lot. I have one die in a lot of things. Yeah, I, I felt like I had to give this mm-hmm. character study because of the academic background. I think she's very good at at doing research and deep dives on stuff. Uh, not great at talking to people though. Hmm. <laughs> Not not very good at, particularly not very good at being manipulative or deceitful, mm-hmm. which, <laughs> see how that works out. Mm-hmm. Can I just jump in to contrast with your character since we yes. have so similar? Uh, so actually, my only resolve skill is one dot and sway. I, I started with two tinker and one wreck. Um, I put a dot in sway, a dot in study, a dot in finesse, and a dot in prowl. I think the studying comes from her temple heritage, that she would have been educated quite young, and her time as a healer on the road. Um, I want to say, actually, the finesse came from there. She learned to do a little bit of, like, pickpocketing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. you, 
just ways to survive on the road. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think the others, um, yeah, I kind of centered her as a little bit more of a physical character along with her insight. Oh, very cool. Josie, do you um, want to go? Yeah. Um, as a hound, I start off with two hunt, which is good because we're I'm rolling with sort of the horse archer thing. Um, and then a dot and survey, uh, which is useful to have for surveying surroundings. Um, I put a dot in finesse for, again, the horse aspect of it. Um, prowl, because if you're out without lightning barriers in the Deathlands, you need to know how to get around out <laughs> there and not be seen. Um, and then, because of her status as, like, a warlord princess, I put my two remaining dots in command. Nice. Nice. The only way she knows how to interact with people is to... <laughs> To give them orders. Talk down to them, basically. Oh, this really is stretching yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So I started out with two in a tune and one in study. Nice. Um, and then I put one in survey, one in command, one in consort, and one in sway. <laughs> nice. You gotta just talk your way out of everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's really interesting. Um, so I, as the slide, I started with one in consort. And two in Sway. Um, and I was debating on putting a second one in Consort, but I decided I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> um, <laughs> except for my friends. Um, so I went ahead and put a one in Command, uh, because she would be used to Command as a princess. Um, one in Study, because she wants to know how to study people up close, uh, individuals as she is trying to talk to them and manipulate them. Uh, survey, to survey a room and find easy marks. And finesse, uh, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You gotta, have a, gotta have a little bit finesse. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next thing that uh, we do for character creation is choose a special ability. So there's a list of, of special abilities that, that your character has access to that... We'll kind of give them some some fun bonuses uh, for what they're able to do. And you pick one. If you're not sure what to pick, the first one on the list is is kind of the, like, it's a good first special ability if you're not uh, sure of what else to go with. Um, and if you have questions about what any of them mean, I can explain, like... Is that really what? the case? Because mine are in alphabetical order. <laughs> um... Oh. Minor. I mean, it's yeah. It says in the book that yeah. Huh. Maybe yours just ended up that way. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, mine are definitely in alphabetical order too. Hmm. And I would not choose alchemist as my first. Special oh no, ability. no. I do know that that one is listed first on for the the leech though. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe it's the crew sheet. No, that's not right. Yeah. I don't know. Shrugs. Yeah. So, like I said, if if there's something where you're looking at and be like, I don't know what this means, just ask, and I can I can explain. I think I'm actually because I did give her that healer background. I'm going to give her the physicer special ability. That makes sense. Which means you guys have a built-in healer. Mm. Yay! You get plus one die to all of your healing treatment rolls. We don't have to go to a weird chemist store, a weird whatever sawtooth is. <laughs> Saw. Listen, yeah. I love sawtooth. Sawtooth is a sketchy back alley doctor. Who is overcharging us. Who is overcharging you, but never reports you and your many, many crimes. <laughs> <laughs> because he's very good and also scruffy Tom Hardy. Yes. Well, then. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to go with, like, looking into a mirror. You can always tell when someone is lying to you. That's my favorite slide ability. <laughs> it has so many. So, but here's the thing: you can tell when someone is lying to you, no matter what. You see through every lie, uh -huh. even the kind ones, yeah. even the ones meant to protect you. Mm. You know there, they're lying. Brutal. There is an ability like that in L five R. Um, it's like the first look. Basically, you have a conversation with somebody for a little while. And then you can discern whether they're lying to you or not. But, like, it makes dating really terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to get drama handed to you. Yeah. So I, uh, I took Ghost Veil, which says, You may shift partially into the ghost field, becoming shadowy and insubstantial for a few moments. 
Um, and then I spend some stress and then I can spend additional stress to kind of get extra features like it lasts for a few minutes, I'm invisible, I can float through the air like a ghost. Basically, I can kind of become a ghost for a, a couple seconds if I want. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, I could literally just, like, oh, this door is locked? Wow. I am on the I other love side. all of the That's ghost special sweet. abilities, because every playbook has a ghost ability. Yeah. yeah. And they're all good, and one of them is just, you can punch ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to take ritual. Um, you can study an occult ritual or create a new one to summon a supernatural yes. effect or being. That's cool. Yeah. I'm There's a it. whole... I, I, I'll i leave it to you. T- there is like a whole like kind of mechanic in the book for how to create a ritual. I don't know if we want to get into that. I mean... Yeah. Probably not, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not if there's time. <laughs> Gosh, I'm having a hard time deciding between two here. Wait. I, my options are sharpshooter, which is you can push yourself yes. to do crazy stuff with ranged weapons, which is fun. But there's one called Ghost Hunter, where your hunting pet is good at fighting ghosts. Ooh. Yeah. And gets a ghost ability. Yeah. Definitely take that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking that one. Oh my goodness. You can Thumbs talk up. to your ghost pet um, in your mind. Well, and that's that's the thing is with the like if you're um Severosi, that was the the silver nails. Remember where I told you that they had the the horses that fight ghosts? That's what you uh-huh. have. Oh, you played you're one a of those. Severosi yeah. hound it says, with a ghost horse. Yeah. You have you have a horse that fights ghosts. With hands for him. Yeah. No. no, no, we're, we're not. We're not doing no. that again. I refuse. I'm not going to inflict that horribleness on everyone. <laughs> um, but it says, yeah, your hunting pet is imbued with spirit energy. It gains potency, which I actually don't know what that means. Uh, it means you when you tracking or fighting the super. You have improved effect. Uh, okay, and gains an arcane ability, ghost form, mind link, or arrow swift. Ooh. Aeroswift specifically says it can travel faster than any creature or vehicle. Crap. I love that. It's so oh, wow. cool. <laughs> Hi ho silver away. <laughs> like in the tight confines of Duskfall, like I imagine like a horse alone is hard to justify, but it would be awesome to have that gotta go fast horse. <laughs> but I I kinda wanna do like a ghost form horse. So it's just I can take surprise horse. I can ride your horse into a room. <laughs> we can both turn into ghosts and just be in a room. Oh wow. <laughs> yep. I- I'm gonna go with that, I think. It's oh that 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 is so many hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know the backstory of this horse that you obviously found out in like the Severosi wastes. <laughs> also, do we um, have two princesses in our party? <laughs> So we, I think, is everybody have, everybody's got a special ability, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So next, um, we choose a friend and a rival. So on your sheet, you have a list of, there'll be some descriptor. For mine, it's shady friends. Everyone, I think, has a different descriptor. Um, that's a list of, of five characters, which is basically a name and a short description. Um and next to each of them is uh, like an up arrow and a down arrow. You know all of these people. These are all contacts of yours. Mm. One of them is somebody who you are really close to. They're a best friend. They're a sibling. They're, you know, you did time together and we're cellmates. Um, these are, that's somebody who, who you have a very strong positive bond with. There is someone who you, uh, is, is your rival. This is somebody who you have crossed in the past uh, they are holding a grudge, or you're holding a grudge. So you you pick you pick one friend <laughs> and one rival. Okay, I've got um, mine. I love this section because yeah. it just lets you uh, <laughs> figure out relationships with NPCs, which is like my dumb favorite thing. It's very good. <laughs> what is a spirit trafficker? Okay, so here's a really fun thing about the setting. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so you know how there's ghosts? Yes. You can capture ghosts in spirit jars, and some people like to take those ghosts. Some people just keep them to ask them for advice. But some people have figured out how to take those ghosts and turn them into ghost drugs. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. You there are drugs ghosts? made out of ghosts. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> it's so good. So a spirit trafficker is someone who deals in the illegal trade of spirits. Wow. <laughs> it's the 
best. That's so good. I love this setting so much, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, 80% of these, like, weird things that it's, like, it gives an occupation and you don't know what it is, most of the time the book won't tell you. It's yeah. just you make it up. Yeah. I um, think the first time I played, I asked you, what's a sentinel? And you're like, I don't know, make it yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know. On the um, Hound playbook, yeah. I think. Yeah, the um the very very first Blades game I ran, they were smugglers, and one of the smuggler crew special abilities is you can smuggle ghosts, which is you can like carry a ghost inside yourself oh, without being right. possessed. So they were like, we are ghost smugglers, and that we mo- we smuggle ghosts and trade them to the spirit trafficker in exchange for money. Oh wow, That's <laughs> it was <so> awesome. Good. <laughs> Ghouls and spirits can be exchanged for money. Yes. <laughs> well, I got mine. Yeah, I got mine too. Same. I have my rival. You know what? I'll go with that for my friend. I think that'll be kind of an interesting arrangement. Does everybody have all of their all of their people? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of excited about this. this is yeah. Good. Oh, this you is go, go first then. Good. You should go. You go first then. I want to know about uh-huh. <laughs> your people that you are so excited about. Okay. Um. So for my, was it a nemesis or an enemy or rival? We, rival. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have. I can't read this tiny writing. Um, it's a professor ghost. A possessor ghost. Pos- uh, a possessor right? ghost. Oh, possessor ghost. Not ghost. professor ghost. Uh, professor ghost. <laughs> a professor ghost. It <laughs> would be great. I want it to be a, a professor ghost. ghost. So it's a professor. So it's, it's Nerex. Yeah. No. Yes. It's. Oh hi. <laughs> yep. N- Nerex, Nerex is a very unique character. Uh, Ryan, if you look at your playbook, I've got you Nerex see on my playbook too. You do yep. have Nerex and on your playbook Nere- as well. Nerex is my best friend. Oh no! <gasps> oh, oh, I it again. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing: Nerex is one of the coolest NPCs in this because she shows up on two playbooks with two different descriptors. Yeah. On the Whisper playbook. Nerex is a possessor ghost. Okay. On the slide playbook, Nerex is a prostitute. Yep. So the book does not, that is the only instance of this character showing up. They do not explain how this works. It is left up to everybody to decide how, what, what this means, how this arrangement is happening. Okay. So she, also, she's both a prostitute and a possessor ghost. There, there, there is someone. It, it yeah. sounds like a, a very uh, lucrative uh, kink market going on there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that would be my estimation. Yeah. yeah. So I it it, it is it, it is a, a ghost who is a prostitute who makes money by indulging people's kink of being possessed. Is that what we're going with? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I don't know. That's what you're not into. what I went with at all. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I want to know what but... what did you go with. Um, so, so in, I was a hundred percent on the same page as Ryan yeah. in, in the uh, magpies, uh, not, Nerex, this isn't spoilers anymore. Yeah, no, right? no, no. These this is all, out. this is okay. all come out. Everybody uh, realized, I think in the most recent episode <laughs> yeah, that it came out. Except for Minx. Yeah, Minx is, so in, in the magpies, Nerex is, um, Minx's on again, off again girlfriend who hmm. is, um, pos- sex worker. Yeah, she she is possessed by a a ghost who has like retained their their mind and personality. So she's just kind of like it's like having a roommate in your head. <laughs> oh, she just she just has a ghost hanging out with her. Um and uh I don't the episode where she kind of explains why she she did this hasn't come out yet, but um Almost everybody in the crew knows, or I think everybody in the crew knows about it, except Minx. No, um, Finn doesn't, because oh, Madge yeah, yeah. didn't know until our season one Q&A episode. <laughs> yeah. Because she so, missed all of the sessions that that happened in. Oh, well. Wow. Yeah, so, so, yeah, um, that's gonna be a fun thing to deal mm-hmm. with when, that, that's, Josie, that's part of why I really want Minx to have oh, that ability, because... No. Can I also point out in the Whisper playbook another fun one? It just throws Skurlock and Sitara. No, Skurlock and um. Yeah, Sitara is. Sitara. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They so Lord Skurlock is a um an extremely powerful NPC in the game who like has his own faction listing and like is super detailed, uh, <laughs> and 
Skrlock. You can just be enemies with him, like, right off the bat. If you are so inclined. Or best friends. Or best also, friends. Also, Skrlock and Satara are, like, locked in some kind of demonic bargain thing. Yeah. Uh, and vying for power, and none of this uh, suggests that they are linked in that playbook, so you could just choose to be friends with one and enemies with another and not realize, oh yeah, they're kind of low-key the same person, <laughs> <laughs> but not. <laughs> Interesting. So so your your friend is Nerex. Yes. Yes. So, oh, your who friend did you is Oh, your friend is. Yeah, your well, both of Nerex. you have Nerex as a friend. I mean, no, like, did... I picked Nerex as an enemy. Yeah, that's what oh, I oh, oh, that's even better. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Nerex is your rival. Who is your friend? Uh, I picked Flint as my friend. Th- is that the spirit trafficker? The spirit trafficker. Excellent. Huh. You're hooking him up. Interesting. Yeah. Why? So, so your your bestie. Stay away Ryan from my was... bestie. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just like not into that. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes. Don't kink shame. <laughs> we'll get to that I'm when we get to shaming. vices. I'm just like not into it. It's okay. <laughs> who is I know, I who is your uh, your rival, Ryan? Uh, you pick? Uh, my character's rival is Baz. So Baz, a game leader. <laughs> you picked the exact same pair that Minx has in the exact <laughs> yeah. same way. <laughs> That's amazing. That is really amazing. Yeah, Baz Bazo is, is the head of the Lamp Blacks. <laughs> Which is In every a, a incarnation, gang. he's a direct attack on me. <laughs> <laughs> a gang so I just kind of a... have an instant reaction to him. That's amazing. <laughs> That's hilarious that you... Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know who wants to go next. I have mine. Go for it. All right. So my friend... Well, my, I'm going to start with my enemy. My enemy is Melista, a priestess. And I think she's a priestess of the Church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh. Ooh. That would make sense. Uh, I don't like them. Um, and my friend is Veldrin, a psychonaut. And I think she's my sister. And just when we came to the city, we went in different directions with being displaced from our um, origins, our temple. Cool. Uh, so I think she just takes mental cruises in... She does ghost drugs. <laughs> yeah, she does ghost drugs and goes on weird time bending trips. <laughs> oh man, that's fun. Um, for my rival, I chose a uh, Celine, a Sentinel, um, which is just like a protector. Um, she's my rival because what with my whole exiled princess thing, I think she's like my sworn protector or something, and came with me. Ooh. <laughs> But and she's, she's pissed at you super for this. not down with all the stuff I'm mixing <laughs> in the cult. I'm so in she's love like, with this. No, what are you doing? I have not having a good job. time with I this s- babysitting job. Uh-huh. I swore an oath. Yeah. <laughs> and you are making it really hard. <laughs> exactly. It's so good. <laughs> Tense bodyguard charge relationships are like the best. Oh, God. That's really good. <laughs> um, and then my friend is. Uh, my friend is Melvier, a uh, physiker. Um, or, you know what? No, I'm going to change my mind. It's going to be Valeris, uh, a yes. spy. I think Ooh. when I first came to the city, I joined up with the blue coats or something, because I'm like, I can put my violence to use and ascend the chain of the command. Um, and Valeris was just someone who latched onto me and like just followed in my wake to get promotions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I left eventually because I was too stubborn and indignant but we're still chill i guess nice so i picked Rosalind kellis a noble as my rival Ooh. um i think this was somebody that i uh kind of ran in the same circles as uh back when my you know i was doing the whole diplomat family thing uh and we had some <laughs> kind of i think that i got my sh- I, I think I'm coming together of how my character got her start with being kind of like the sneak thief lurk type she would like steal blackmail material on on the nobility that she was affiliated yes. with <laughs> I love it. And just be like, so I found out about this thing, and unless you want it to go public, here's my demands. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're just like the worst gossip. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh, I love this. And then her friend is Darmot, a blue coat, <laughs> um, which is mm. one of the a member of the the city uh, police. Um, and I think that this is somebody that she just like has had him on the take 
for so long that like now they're friends. <laughs> nice. <laughs> She's just been bribing this guy to like keep her her out of prison and her friends that now it's just kind of like yeah, we meet up for like weekly up. drinks and hang out and catch up on what's going on in each other's lives and then like at the end of the, the hangout like I hand him a sack of money <laughs> is she working on converting him no, I think it's well oh yeah because we are a cult maybe I might be <laughs> <laughs> um so uh the the next step after that, which is step seven out of eight, so we're almost done with the characters, is choosing your vice. Mm. Um, so this was what I mentioned earlier when I was talking about uh, stress, where you have to have a way of of dealing with the stress that your life, um, the, this life of of crime, causes. So similar to kind of the heritage and background, there are broad categories of vice. Um, Faith, gambling, luxury, obligation, pleasure, stupor, or weird. Um, and then you can kind of pick a description for, uh, or, or a detail for, for what that is. Um, obligation is kind of the odd one out in that it, like, it's not exactly a vice. Obligation is more of like, um, helping people, like, it's you, you help a family or a charity or an organization. Um, I that, feel like basically vice is like it's a way that you recharge, but it can also get in the way if you let it. Yes. So everybody picks a vice and uh, kind of the the specifics of how that vice manifests. I know mine because it's one I discarded for a recent one shot character. <laughs> um, I have the vice of pleasure, and I think there's like a bathhouse spa type thing in um, what's it called, Silkshore? Yeah. Yeah. And I think she goes there. Nice. Just need to have your spot. Yeah. yeah. I, I think she has like a, <laughs> a big affinity with water. The the temple that she used to belong to, I think, was to some kind of water deity. So oh, nice. Just just theming that in there. <laughs> yeah. That's generally mm. my brand. Um, but I also went with pleasure. Uh, oh, nice. But I went with the gratification from lovers. Yes. Ooh. Does that include? Yeah, she's Does like, that include go- ghost? Uh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect vice, honestly. Uh huh. I think uh, my vice is going to be faith, and I think the cult itself is the vice Ooh. here. Like, I'm totally, totally bought into it. <laughs> nice. And just get into a lot of trouble by being so openly devoted to this faith and pissing off Celine some more. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so I like I engage in like ritual or whatever whenever I need to calm down or get guidance. I think that's a good point. I'm really bad about vices in that I often choose vices that don't actually cause that much trouble outside of uh indulging them. Um and I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. I think it could be interpreted either way from what it's talking yeah. about. I've just never, ever once marked XP for my vice getting in the way. <laughs> uh, hmm. yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking, like, hopefully I get in trouble for, like, using our cult's phrases or, like, <laughs> oh. our equivalent of, like, the sign of I've the cross you're... in public or something. You're really good at, like, vices <laughs> that, like, challenge your character in the midst of scores. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I want to, like, make a combination of things. Can I yeah. do that? The- yeah, what are you thinking? Well, because I want to mix... <laughs> I want to mix stupor and weird. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like I want to have, like, weird ghost LSD trips. Yeah, to yeah. To find my... Well. my- <laughs> yeah, you can definitely do, do that. Do you hang out with my sister? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to snort some ghost juice. <laughs> yeah. But not my ghost. But it's it's for research. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. As long as the ghosts are okay. I think I'm actually going to go really, like, basic with mine. Um, my my character just likes to drink. She just goes out to bars and, yeah. and drinks a lot after scores. All right. There you go. Yeah, just... Sometimes you just gotta unwind. Yeah. I have to say, I, I love, like, creative interpretations of vices. I think one oh, of my yeah. favorites is, like... It's an example in the book, but I love, like, for stupor, like, 
getting beaten to a pulp in the fighting pits. It's like so yes. flavorful and like intro i don't know yeah <laughs> some of these get really interesting mm -hmm. yeah um so then the the last thing um is after we've all got our vices is uh your your character's name uh alias if you've got one and uh what they look like Three, we have to name people mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes <laughs> welcome to my hell yeah there's a, there's a whole it's become a running gag at this point where on the magpies, they'll be like, so what's this NPC's name? And there's just a long silence as I glare at my monitor, like, how dare you ask me for a name? <laughs> Do you have any idea how hard it is for me to come so, up with a name? on the list of things that Rita likes, coming up with names, my puns. puns. <laughs> yeah, and my favorite, I left my favorite naming book in the other room, too. Um, oh, no. There is, like, a little list of, of names in the character creation section that you can use, um, on, I don't know if you have the books, but it's on page fifty six, or it's also in the free character creation I, sheets. I sent them the the character creation mm -hmm. sheets. Yeah, um, there's a list there. Um, the fun thing about the family names, though, is that a lot of them are like in existence in the book. So some of them you can end up accidentally like linked to these families in Duskwall. Yep, it's a fun time. Uh, like I found <laughs> out that uh, I have Myra Keel on the Magpies, and there's like a what's some her name. It's like, very similar. It's like Mina or Mira or something really close to Myra Keel, <laughs> uh, who exists yeah. somewhere in the city, yep. like Dunsloff or something. Yeah, she she's in Barrowcleft. Oh, Barrowcleft, that's it. Somewhere down on that end of the city. Mara. Mara is her name. Mara A former, Keel. Yeah. I haven't done anything with that yet. <laughs> who yet, knows? Yet being knows the operative word. I... I've had a list of names open since I decided. Oh well, the the, uh, the heritage. So I've got some stuff Ooh, picked out. I want to know. Is <laughs> um, foresight. Um, uh, her real name is Alton Sarnai, which is Mongolian for golden rose. Mm -hmm. um, but her alias and more common name, I think, is just going to be Ryder. Nice. That's a little nice. bit on the nose, but. It's probably not a name um, she picked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then for look, I ignored the formatting so I can put down tall, dark, and butch. <laughs> so Perfect. Tall, dark, and nice. So, Good. Good. <laughs> one thing I just realized is I haven't fully defined my hunting pet mm. yet. Yeah, you got it. That's important. It's vitally important. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm I'm obviously going with a horse, um, but I'm but it has ghost form. So it can phase through stuff. Um, and I'm thinking it's an a black horse with al alban albinism. So it's a white black horse. Ooh. Um, which is like an omen or yeah. something. And I'm thinking it's carnivorous. Oh my god, I love it so much. It's horrifying. <laughs> but it's great because you ride into yeah. battle, shoot something oh, down, and no. your horse can just come up no. and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I want the horrifying sharp tooth ghost land. Horse. That's a good way to feed horses in the Severosi wasteland. Uh -huh. Yeah, it deals with the it's fact perfect. that there's not really grass anymore. Oh my. Yeah, and I'm thinking the meat eating part is the normal part. Um <laughs> the weird omen that makes her her special ruler horse is the white hair. Oh god, I'm so that's so horrifying. <laughs> White hair, red eyes. Oh. Oh, I love this setting. <laughs> it's it's yes. really good. I'm I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> and you can just go so many weird directions, and it's beautiful. Like the more you dig into it, the more fun. Yeah, I have at least. Oh, this name thing. I'm just like really. I know. Okay. <laughs> I, I've got my name alias and look. Yeah, I've got my. I'm not doing an alias for for my girl. Okay. I've got a name because I one name is. It's enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I leaned heavily into uh, this whole, like, um, I don't know, manipulator type. Um, mm -hmm. So I chose my alias first, uh, Vixen. Nice. Uh, female fox. And uh, went for the name of Kitsune Vale. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and then for the look, uh, woman, striking. Copper skin, dark red hair, deep green eyes, with a fitted dress and a half cape. It's very good. That's a very, That's a very good, good look. 
Um, I can go next. Um, so uh, my character is um, Nazrin Zarya, uh, and <laughs> her her look is. Um, I didn't use the kind of formatting here. Um, although I would say probably uh, delicate for for sort of the the one word description, but she has um, long dark hair that she usually wears in a braid, um, and has tattoos on both arms from like the back of her hands all the way up to her shoulders that are just um, I think I haven't quite decided what they are of yet, um, but I. Th- I think it's cult related, yeah. So it's like I think when she's out and about, she has to wear like long sleeves and fingerless gloves if she wants to be incognito <laughs> at all. Um, so yeah, that's that is my person. The names are still kicking my butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep like finding them and then losing them. I've decided on a first name. Last names are hard. Yeah, last names are very hard. I just went without one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make one up. I'm going to say first name is Arden. And family name, I'm going to say Swell. Because that sounds good. Yeah, Arden, Arden Swell. 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 That's, That's a good name. name. That's just Swell. <laughs> um, For an alias, I'm going to go with Crow. Nice. nice. Spoopy. And I think for looks... I'm going to go with um, ambiguous, and I'm going to say, can I, can I say disquieting? Yes, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Perfect. So, also with um, crows, mm-hmm. another fun thing about this setting. Um, so, when people die... It's a little bit of a problem because ghosts come out of you when you die. Mm -hmm. Not right away. There's usually like one to three days. Um, But it's very important that the uh, the spirit wardens who are kind of responsible for um, squelching all supernatural uh, ghostly activity in the city, um, the spirit wardens need to recover the body so it can be properly destroyed so the spirit doesn't come out. So the way that they do this is... Um, through magic, anytime somebody in the city dies, uh, the bell at Bellwether Crematorium, where the bodies are destroyed, begins to ring. And what is called a Death Seeker Crow sets out from the crematorium and circles in, getting slow, like spiraling in closer and closer to the location of the body um, for the spirit wardens to follow this, this crow to where the body is so it can be recovered and taken away so one that's just cool (laughs) yes and two um kind of from a for a gameplay perspective it means that anytime you kill someone on a score you immediately start a clock ticking down to a a representatives of an extremely powerful organization kicking down the door Mm. so like you don't want to go around doing a lot of murders because it's going to cause a lot of problems. Right. Well, it looks like I'm set up to cause a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Minna, were we... Oh, God, please. <laughs> uh, I don't know why names are tripping me up so much. It's because I'm such a geek about names. Mm-hmm. So, like, I really love to, like, dig in and, like, get weird about it. Having trouble with that. Okay, let's go back to the name list. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's also bugging me because I named so I made someone named Feldrin my sister, and that doesn't fit the naming convention for Rubia. It's fine. We're fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's okay. I don't have a last name. I think her name is Madri. Nice. And last names are for people who have time to dig into names. <laughs> <laughs> what is what does she look like? She looks oh god, the look list. <laughs> um I think she tends to be, like, very nondescript, if that makes sense. Like, that's my first thought for her. And I think she likes, like, hoods and, like, scarves and, like, hiding her hair. Not for any particular reason beyond that it hides her more. Um, She likes to be unnoticed. And I know she's not a lurk, but she does like that. Yeah. 
So yes, I suppose the look would be something like... Concealed. Yeah, concealed. Um, cold, I think. And we're gonna go with... What's the clothes? I actually like loose silks a lot. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. So, like, you almost notice her clothes more than you notice the person underneath. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, so that is it. That's that's character creation in Blades. Oh, wow. That is how you, mm-hmm. you make a Blades person. Very cool. We did it. Although, do we want to do our Yes. Creation? We do. Yes. Because here at, at Creation Cast, basics. we like to create backgrounds of how we yes. all got together. Um, so the the crew sheet doesn't exactly define how we came together. We get to make stuff up still. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We get to make the links. Yeah. Um, let me look at how we build a crew. Um, but some of the, the kind of like, as we build the crew, that might lead to some, um, some ideas yeah. for how we came together. So we are a cult. I have the cult sheet open. Um, the first thing that we do is pick a crew reputation and a lair. Um, So the reputation is kind of like when people out in the city are describing us, what adjective do they use? Um, So like... What's that adjective um, uh, Amelia chose? (laughs) Describing? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Blood settling. Yeah. Um, So yeah, when when people are talking about us, how do they... uh, how do they just heretical? So heretical, disquieting. I like unsettling. What, unsettling. Once they find mm-hmm. out what we're about, it's yeah. very unsettling. <laughs> I think unsettling just works in general. Mm-hmm. Like, all right. We're all kind of a little bit foreign somehow, uh-huh. and none of us like share like the more is prominent in Duskwall, and we're also weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't mm-hmm. describe like how I'm. I'm weird. Cause I'm, yeah, oh yeah, you know, you're Tech Rosie. Yeah, What's your need to tell us their Ooh, demonic tells? Yeah, I feel like I have hair that moves on its own. Oh yeah, you have a permanent oh. dramatic wind. That's I, no, she has I a almost permanent think like Ghibli thing. I no, I almost think like Medusa style snakes, oh. except not actual snakes. But it it acts oh. that way. That's so yes. cool. Yes. That's mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. You have prehensile hair? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do. That's very good. Can you um, use it to, like, grasp things or, like, wrap around things? I don't know. Yeah, well, I think the question is but how it's much... It's very easy to style in the morning. <laughs> how much question do you... Or how, <laughs> how much control do you have over it? Um, I think not that much. Yeah. It's nice and I like that idea a awesome. lot. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so our reputation is unsettling. Um, and then we pick a lair, which is like our, our, I think in this case, it would kind of be like our temple. Mm -hmm. Um, so some examples are, um, a half sunken grotto in the city's canals. Um, the unassuming back rooms of a merchant's shop, a, a small abandoned house at the end of a dark lane. Like it can be really just kind of anything, but where do you, where do you think we hang out and do cult stuff? I think it's got to be the thing that we've designated as our temple, but what does that look like? Where have we set up a little temple? It might help to figure out what our cult's about. Yeah. Yes. We could jump up to that. So yeah, one of the steps for the cult is picking our forgotten god. Ooh. Let me find... Oh, the forgotten god table. Yeah, let me find that list. Um, oh, there's a table. Yeah, yeah. there's a forgotten god table. It's a really long list is the problem. Uh-oh. I think you can roll on it. It's a 66... 66 item list. Oh, wow. I don't know. It's not actually 66 items. That's just if you're going to roll. Oh, you're right. Okay. So you roll 2d6. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 36. Yeah, that would make sense. So is, is it basically like uh, we did we just did the, the life pass system uh, where you roll 2d6, one's the 10th place, one's the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we could do that. I could just roll some just dice, like, and we could see what kind of a quick randomization. Yeah, what kind of right god now. we come up with? Okay, let's roll with it. Yeah, let's roll, and then if we don't like it, we can. Just okay, go. so um, the throne of judgment. Ooh. 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 I feel like that fits with all of us having like a, a Ooh, some kind of yeah. noble high class background. I like that. <laughs> Except me. What am oh. I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Should we roll and pick like best of three? 
Okay, yeah. So we've got the throne. I mean, I like to... Yeah, yeah. I have some options. We have the throne of judgment. Mm -hmm. We have the reconciler. No. And we have... This is one that actually came up in the magpies briefly. The father of the abyss. Mm. Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, does it describe any of them, or does it's it just, just names. throw it, names It gives at you? names, and then it gives a suggested cult practice, but it doesn't. You don't actually have to follow that. So it's like a mix and match as you see fit. Yeah. Um, so the throne of judgment. Uh, their recommended cult practice is desecration, manipulation of authorities and institutions to appropriate their power. Again, that, that feels that very on perfect. brand. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I think we nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Probably. I think so. I really yeah, do we just want to go with that? Yes, please. I, I the do. throne yeah. of judgment. Okay, so we are a cult of the throne of judgment. So that goes under deity, right? Yep. Ooh. The throne of judgment. Yeah. Uh, where'd it go? That was desecration. And our crew could just be the cult of the throne. Yeah. Or something. Um, and then the broken throne cult. <laughs> we um. We pick two features of our deity, um, basically just kind of descriptions. Yeah. And, and so the features listed are alluring, cruel, ferocious, monstrous, radiant, sinister, serene, transcendent. I think ferocious almost has to be there. Yeah. Or is it- I like ferocious and radiant. Ferocious and radiant. I like that. I don't know. I kind of like ferocious and alluring. I was thinking alluring too. as well. They're both yeah, ferocious and alluring. Actually, I like those. Let's yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we lure you in and then sprain our trap. Oof. Yeah. Oh man, we're terrible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. So that that is the uh. So that's our deity. So going back to the lair, what kind of temple? have we set up for the throne of judgment bearing in mind that we we do not have a lot in the way of resources Mm -hmm. um this is a little bit on the nose but like is there just like one courthouse in duskfall or are they like spread out what if there's an abandoned courthouse in six towers because that used to be a fancy pants district before yeah like the plague well not the plague but before now it just kind of fell out of popularity People stopped yeah. living there. Yeah, I, w- I was thinking like a basement, but like the basement of an abandoned courthouse is kind of cool. I, l- I was thinking a basement yeah. as well. Um, I was too, but I think it was, I was thinking that it's something like kind of like plain and simple that we have attempted to yeah. Yeah. decorate appropriately. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like a key aesthetic is hammers and fancy chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I'm for it. What about like a? Yeah, I really like it being like those like really meaty mallet type hammers that you could break up stone. Yeah. With. What yeah. about like a like a basement right. of um like a tool shop, like a, an abandoned tool shop or or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Basin. Oh, yeah, it could be like yeah. I was gonna say like yeah. a mason or something. Yeah. Like yes. Mason. Yeah, I imagine whatever it is, it has a lot of like iron and so like metal stuff but then there's also like these like draped silks yes. maybe it's the basement of like an abandoned blacksmith shop oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. that yeah, we've just like that. dragged a bunch of that stuff down yeah, for, for our purposes i like that i yeah. just want our aesthetic to be iron and silk <laughs> that's very important to me it's a just good a, aesthetic a good uh-huh. aesthetic. it's a good aesthetic all right um I had the page for how to do crew building open, and then I closed the book <laughs> like a dummy. So we... Okay. This works a little bit differently for a cult, where we are picking not so much hunting ground as sacred sites. Okay. So this is picking a location in the city that is kind of a... Uh, that, that we have determined is a sacred site to us. Um, what if this one is like related to authority somehow? Like our our home temple is like just the the blacksmith shop, but like it could be because there's like all these like underground tunnels and things in Duskwall. It could be something like underneath a courthouse or something like that. Yeah. What was the um? What was the text for our 
throne of judgment? Um, Do you remember? The our, our our rituals involve manipulating authorities and institutions in order to appropriate their power. I'm just okay. having a sudden like mental image of almost like like there's this scene in that Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes film where there's like weird stuff happening almost like underneath a session of parliament. And I just imagine that happening with us. I might be misremembering that movie also. <laughs> but like the the idea of like the people in power meeting above us while we plan beneath. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it? I don't know. I feel like the Lord Governor's stronghold. Oh, That's going to be so hard to get to. to <laughs> but yeah, we don't have to play like, this game. That's <laughs> true. You're right. right. But it could also be like a place overlooking it or something where it's prominent oh yeah like where you have it like bearing I, down I, yeah i feel I like guess. i would want our sacred space to be something that is a like physically above mm, okay that would make sense. Um, so like, even if the, it's not in a place that's particularly nice like i just want it to be yeah. like so very... the the rule if you look at the map of of duskwall the rulers of the city live in white crown which is on a little island uh, that's removed from the rest of the city. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's maybe our place is like a tall building in the docks, like it's the top floor or the roof of a building in the docks, so that is we can look a out lighthouse? on White Crown. Hmm? I have like a lighthouse. A lighthouse would well, be rad as hell. Yeah, it would. Mm-hmm. Do those exist? They probably I li- so I like the idea that it's an abandoned lighthouse yeah. because like you've got the lightning barrier goes out around the bay, so like that provides enough light for ships coming in. So right. they like, don't use the lighthouse dis- yeah, anymore. You don't need it. Yeah. And it could be in the docks, which is not as hard a territory to get yeah. into. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. An abandoned lighthouse yeah. overlooking the White docks Crown. Still has like enough power adjacent mm-hmm. stuff like that's where all the journalists are and that's where the big bank is and, and the like leviathan that. hunters and the leviathan hunters who are so, like the yeah. powers in the city yeah the um the the demon blood that was previously mentioned that fuels the lightning barrier and a whole lot of technology in the city um is collected from these immortal demons called leviathans that are out in the void sea it's basically whaling except with demons Demon whaling. Yeah. Really cool. You know. And every prominent family in the city runs Leviathan hunting ships. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they have fleets. Yeah. And that's how they are. So rich. Mm. Yeah. Like, um, they're, they're the captains of industry. Um, pun not intended. <laughs> uh, okay. Small, always a center of energy needs. So. Coal money to this. Then... So so as I mentioned earlier, everybody, every scrap of territory in the city is already claimed. So this site that we have, I actually think I should have done this for, should I have done this for, no, I shouldn't have done this for the lair, I don't think. Let me double check something. I might have skipped a step. I think lair and hunting grounds, right? No, lair does not. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So like, so every scrap of territory in the city is already claimed. So our our hunting grounds this this lighthouse somebody else controlled it before we did we took it from somebody um so there's a whole bunch of factions in the city yeah real quick bazos are enemies uh-huh. again. we're in a uh-huh. lighthouse oh, oh we're in- the lamp we took it from the lamp flax <laughs> I, oh, that's a really oh, good idea. They so to, they must have used to run the lighthouse like way back before. Uh, yeah, what, whatever you so, call it, spark, yeah, spark stuff. So one of the criminal uh, organizations in the city is a group called the Lamp Blacks, who are, are run by Bazo Baz. Ooh, I hate that guy. The lamp, yeah, the Lamp Blacks <laughs> used to be the Lamplighters Guild. They were, um, you know, they would go around and light all of like the gas and coal lanterns or lights throughout the city. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then uh, electric lighting happened and they basically like went out of business. So as you do, they turned to crime. So I like that idea that they used to be responsible for this lighthouse and we ganked it from them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And so they don't like us as a result. I like that. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. We also get friends, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. Okay. Um, I don't remember what order this happens in. It's been a while. Yeah. So the next thing after we, we've picked our, our, our sacred sites is we choose a special ability for the crew. Um, this is kind of similar to the special abilities that we picked for our characters, but this is something that will give all of the crew members um, some kind of bonus. So um, do you want me to just read off the the different options? Um, or do people have the page open? I have it open. Yeah, I'm okay, looking, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the crew sheet that you sent. Yeah, me. yeah. So any of these... Jumping out at people. Mm. Um, Glory Incarnate is really fun for this crew. Your deity sometimes manifests in the physical world. Uh, oh, Rook. yep. This can be a great boon, but the priorities and values of a god are not those of mortals. You have been oh, warned. No. That is literally what the description says. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad not picking sealed in blood, but <laughs> I guess we could go with that one. Glory incarnate, we can just manifest the throne of judgment in this world. I mean, yeah, I mean that's real blood cool. Is pretty good as well, it's real but, cool. Oh Let's goodness. do that. Glory, glory okay. incarnate, we can summon our god. Yeah. We can't think in terms of adva- advancements because we're not going to play. So, mm-hmm. yes. yeah, don't don't think about how terrible of an idea any of this is. Um, well, I was just gonna say that Glory Incarnate <laughs> sounds like a really fun thing to have as like a later advancement, but we're now, man, we're starting, starting with, that. with that. Yeah, we're starting. We're building for a one shot. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing we do is um, crew upgrades. So the cult starts with it's not actually one of them is missing. Um, we start with a co. Oh, it is on here actually. We start with a cohort. Um, a, a gang of adepts, um, which basically means we have like we are the cult leaders, and we it have hurts. we have a handful of worshippers already. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, um, huh. who because they're so dedicated to us will uh, go out and do stuff for us. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So um, crew upgrades are um, kind of over bottom right of the the thing we get to pick two of these so yeah we've got you we can upgrade uh, we can pick cult specific ones we can pick things to upgrade our lair we can pick stuff to um make various like pieces of equipment better for us uh or we could um increase kind of our our training resources which Basically allows us to to get more XP for certain actions. Hmm. So what are we what are we thinking? I love the idea of a ritual sanctum in the lair. I do too. Which means we can do like rituals and stuff. Yeah. Without going somewhere else to do them, we can do them right at home. Oh, that's nice. Summon your god from the comfort of your own home. Uh (laughs) I mean, especially because I can like make up rituals. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a really Uh, good point. yeah, it really fits well with what we've got going. <laughs> I'm going to put in a vote for uh, for our lair either being secure or hidden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like... It almost has to be like, I don't know. Because we could, we could tell Acolytes uh, how to get to a hidden lair. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I like good. hidden. Okay. Like, I have a feeling we're not the most subtle of cults, but we still need to have yeah. some safety yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... So, with these upgrades, um, these uh, there's one faction out in the world that helped us get one of these upgrades, and and they they like us, they are friendly towards us. Um, and then another faction was uh, in some way inconvenienced by the other upgrade, uh, and they don't like us so much. So. Um, this is, it says that the GM will tell you, um, so I'm going to say, instead of that, I'm going to, let's let's go with, there's kind of four broad categories of factions, so I'll just sort of give those categories and we can decide sort of, like, from there we can narrow it down. Yeah. So, sure. uh, well, first, do we think that someone helped us get the Ritual Sanctum, or was someone, uh, is someone 
upset? Did we inconvenience someone in getting our rich? I like the idea of us in inconveniencing inconveniencing some other arcane church of the ecstasy of the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh god, that would be really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I already don't like them. <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, we we stole some stuff from the church of ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. To build our ritual sanctum. Um, that checks out. Okay, Especially and then the silks. Yeah. Yeah. Who do we think so we have so somebody helped us get our make our lair hidden. So we have underworld, which is a bunch of other criminals, institutions, which are like the the legitimate institutions of the city, um, labor and trade, which are kind of the the working people of the city and different organizations, and the fringe, which is weird stuff. Fringe. I want. Okay. I want to say yeah. uh, the actual legitimate institutions helped us become hidden. Um, because Ooh, because we oh, manipulated we them, them into doing so. <gasps> oh, oh, that's very good. Yes. What if it was the Dagger Isles Consulate? Ooh, or like, what if our slide like? Pulled yeah, them, pulled I was also chair? gonna suggest sort of similarly the blue coats because I do have that blue coat contact. Yeah, that mm-hmm. they maybe helped us find a place, but both of those are good. What do we think? Hmm. I, I kind of like um, the idea of the Dagger Isles, like being able to pull on that connection. Yeah, to set it's us really up. fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, we we have we have a friendly connection with the Dagger Isles Consulate. Yeah. Who who is your character again? The slide. Uh, like what? I'm a uh, what was Dagger the Isles uh, princess. Ah, yes. Perfect. So that would yeah. Um, I got a few connections. Yeah. Off on your room, Springa. Starting a cult. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So then the last thing that we do for crew creation is we choose a favorite contact. Again, kind of like with the um, the character sheets, we know all of these people, but um, one of them is is somebody who uh, we are, are much closer to. Um we don't have necessarily a rival oh. in this group. So is that who who do we think out of all of these fine people here uh, hmm. is is our close contact? I like the idea of Hutchins, the antiquarian, like someone who a likes these traditional ways of thinking and like old power structures and stuff oh, so and can like put us in contact with our histories mm-hmm. and the this like. This is so interesting that we're actually almost like we're we're kind of like going for like old style authority. Yeah, we're like a than... a monarchist cult. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're like neo neo yeah. or something. I mean, that is kind of how I envision it. Like we are all sort of uppity rich uh-huh. kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just so God. We suck. I've, I've never played Blades <laughs> as that kind of like looking back and drawing from the past for power. Yeah, kind of thing. I like that. So we want to go with the antiquarian Hutchins. I think so. <laughs> um, let me check. Yeah, that's that is the last step for for crew creation. So yeah, we've we've got this group. Uh, well, oh, I, I'm sorry. I take that back. The last step is naming the crew. Well, we kind of did, didn't we? Yeah, I thought we went with uh, what cult of the throne, or do we want something different? Although I think Rina said like cult of the broken throne. Or the broken throne yeah, or something. Yeah, I said something like that. Uh, I was just throwing that out there. No, I like it. Yeah, like it the broken throne. Yeah, so we're a bunch of, like, exiled nobles and rich kids. <laughs> we're almost trying to bring back the world that died in the cataclysm. Yeah, or at, <laughs> yeah. Least, or at least the power structures thereof. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, God, we are. We're very bad. Oh, hey, sh- it's not like things are going think, so great without us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think also an important question is like, how actually sincere is everyone in their Ooh. belief? Like, are we all like way deep in it, or some are some of us using it, or are some of us just That's sympathetic really but not especially dedicated? Oh man, how yeah, that would be because I'm thinking and- I'm a total yeah. religious zealot. Like I've completely bought into it. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, it's definitely interesting the idea of some people using it as a means to an end. 
Because, I mean, we are spoiled rich <laughs> kids. It's just sort of like, oh, this is, is a way for us to get power. To reclaim Let's do a that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm definitely just here for the spooky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I so almost, whispers here for the spooky almost stuff. like the idea of my character like having become really loyal to one of the royals in our group <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and like pledge Ooh, that's her fun. fealty <laughs> well you're you and re are both Arubian, yeah right but i'm not i'm so not royalty sense, also i don't i oh, think right. that our characters are at odds yeah i think so okay yeah like i think it's more of a matter of then like do you respect, like, the political player sort of ruler or the Iron Fist sort of ruler? I think my character's just using it to get money. I don't oh think I don't think she's... I mean, I think she... The god literally... Ma- I, she does not have a choice but to believe in the god because the god mm-hmm. literally can manifest. So, like, she believes right. in it, but she's not... I don't think she's as interested in... in propagating the cult i think that she is interested in well she she wants the cult to succeed and spread so that her position and privilege can can rise again because i think that she i think she probably got disowned by her family at some point Mm -hmm. and so this is kind of her it's an alternate path back (laughs) to power and privilege so i okay no go ahead I was going to say, I, I think that my character is more, like, accidentally doing culty things. <laughs> like, just because she got into weird stuff. Like, they're just making it up as they go, and it seems to be That's working. <laughs> and, like, we're just going to keep snorting these ghosts and hoping for the best. <laughs> so... This is really. Oh yeah, what if the of a big thing of this is like ancestor worship and stuff? Because like you're you're like taking the spirits of the ancestors into yourself and assuming they're no longer. Oh, oh my gosh, that's like... so good. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So I had this like this idea is this feels like our spire episode <laughs> where we were talking about eating grandma. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So that she's with you always. <laughs> Exactly. So I have this idea swimming around, and uh, I did not come up with this tonight. I was having thinky thoughts about something that got discarded last night. <laughs> <laughs> thinky um, thoughts. I like that term. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that um, my character is from like a city in Aruvia. It's kind of on the coast. And there was an island that during the cataclysm sank into the sea. Mm. And her people are some of the last survivors of that. And they remain like a somewhat separate community in that city. So I think they had, like, Severosi mm. heritage, and so she is loyal to Josie's character oh. because she's loyal to, like, that connection, oh, that ancestral connection. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I really like that. Hooray, I have servants. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I think for my character, um, huh, how to put this, um, she wants to see if she can become good enough to manipulate the physical incarnation of a god. Uh, <laughs> what? Hashtag goals. <laughs> oh my god, wow. that is like the personification of what our cult uh-huh. is about, though. That's so good. This, I love this group so much. This, this is a lot of good girls. <laughs> a lot of good lore, man. Oh, man. Um... That, that is one thing, like, our beliefs are not going to be, like, patriarchal no. about this nah. in any way. No. I think that's everything for, for our, our characters and our crew. Oh, Great man. Use. these Look at these bad kids. <laughs> they're so <laughs> they terrible. So t- they're very bad. <laughs> they're oh, so man. These... <sighs> wow, we went, like, the entire opposite. <laughs> I know. I've never I love that. Yeah. I love before. that, like, we just created some horrible mm-hmm. people. And also just in terms of, like, ideals so different. Like, the things that they cleave to are completely separate yeah. from... I love this. Yeah, yeah, this is really good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about these bad kids? We still gotta do... The, we still have the discussion phase. Yes. Oh, man. That part usually goes pretty That's quick, true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our Blades in the Dark character creation episodes. Re, do you want to remind people where they can find you? 
Yes, uh, you can find my personal Twitter is at Rhiannon42. And uh, I also run the Magpies Twitter account, which is at Magpies underscore pod. And Josie, what about you? Uh, yeah, you can find me at the Magpies places as well. And on my Twitter at Dragon Girl Josie. All right. And Minna, how about yourself? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mina Minar, M-Y-N-A-M-I-N-N-A-R-R. <laughs> it's a nightmare of a Twitter handle. None of my usual handles were available. <laughs> it's not as bad as Sendas, though. Sendas is still really hard to... I, I will I will also add, I'm not used to uh, promoting this yet, our, our brand new Patreon for the Magpies. Oh, oh yes. yes. You just started that yeah. today? Yesterday? Yesterday. yesterday. It launched yeah. yesterday. Oh, um, so yes, you can also find the Magpies. Um, I guess I'll, I'll do all of the Magpies things. Um, magpiespodcast.net is our main website. And um, patreon.com slash magpiespodcast is where you can uh, check that out if you... Uh, Decide that you listen to our podcast and want to support us. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you for listening. We will be back for our discussion episode next week. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Modifier. Modifier is an interview show hosted by Megan Dornbrock, all about why and how people change games. From the hobbyist to the professional, from house rules to publication, we all have in mind a better way to play. What's yours?